Excellent! Hey, what's up everyone? I have a build video for you guys today, and this one is kind of unplanned because my editor Joe hit me up and basically editing videos for me uh, over a long period of time has given him the I must build a computer bug, like right now. So he bought some parts, I have some parts also that I'm going to provide to him, and then we also have his old system that he has been using to build computers. So we're going to take a look at his old system and then we're going to like upgrade it to a new system specifically for Joe to edit videos in 4K and stuff. I'm going to call this new series Configure My System. By the way, there's Joe. Hey Joe. Uh, he's going to be editing this video on this computer that hasn't even been built yet, which is kind of a weird, like that's like looking into the future right now. So this computer here is actually a computer that I built several years ago. It's had several different revisions. Uh, it uses a 3960X for the CPU at the middle. So it's an X79 motherboard from Gigabyte. Uh, it's got, I believe, 32 gigs of memory in it right now. And it's got a couple different SSDs. This is an OCZ Revo Drive SSD right here. There's also a OCZ Vector uh, 240 gig SSD that's right there. And then uh, Joe also has a mechanical drive there for long-term storage and uh, that kind of thing. There's a GTX 670 for the graphics card and uh, we're using that with CUDA acceleration for Adobe Premiere to you know make sure that the overlays and special effects and everything were good. Now why isn't Joe satisfied with this computer? That's a good question. You guys might look at this computer and be like this is an awesome computer I'd be super happy with it but Joe was like no it sucks I need a better one. That's not exactly what he said but Joe why do you need a better computer than this? Mainly for After Effects Okay, so Joe's does After Effects, and After Effects just eats up memory, right? That, and also want to edit a 4K. And editing at 4K. So maybe maybe Paul will actually have 4K videos on his channel now. And Joe does other work for other people too. Uh, should, that should go without saying. So anyway, we're going to move Joe up to X99, and uh, we're also going to move Joe up to a 5820K. This is the processor right here, and this is actually an engineering sample processor. Uh, I'm going to be lending Joe this for the time being, uh, and that's going to go along with the Gigabyte X99 G1 Gaming Motherboard. This is their retail box. They've kind of gone with a little bit more of a minimalist look for their retail box this time around, Gigabyte, but it's okay. There it is. Okay, so the X99 Ultra Gaming. Not, Although it does say G1 Gaming. It's confusing. I'm confused, Gigabyte. Anyway, it's a very nice X99 Motherboard. That is the point. So I recommended that he get a 64 gig kit because he wanted 128 gigs at first, and then he actually realized that the 5820K doesn't support 128 gigs, um, which I didn't realize, although I probably would have figured it out eventually. Anyway, back to the point, which is this is a lot of memory in only four uh, sticks, so 16 gigs per DIMM, and it's only going to use four of the eight memory slots. So if Joe decides in the future he wants to upgrade and make this an even more beastly system for editing, he can by simply swapping that uh, 5820K uh, for a Broadwell eCPU like a 6800 or 6850K or heck, even a 6950X if you can find someone to murder and steal theirs because who wants to spend $1700 on one of those? And then he could of course upgrade his memory as well to get up to 128 gigs. But we'll see how 64 gigs works for now. For the rest of the parts, we are going to upgrade the case. So we have the Corsair Air 540 here. If you guys were disappointed that I didn't build the monthly build in the uh, Corsair Air 540, fear not, we're going to have a build in that right now. We're replacing uh, a Corsair case with a Corsair case. This is the 600T, uh, which is also for some of the Carbide series. This one has like, it's, this one's quite old now though, like it has a pass through for the USB 3 and that kind of thing. This will be a good case though, a nice upgrade from the 600T and some nice new features there. For a graphics card, we got the Zotac GeForce GTX 1070, uh, less expensive than the GTX 1080, almost as many CUDA cores. And uh, as long as you go and edit the text file in Adobe Premiere Pro or Adobe Premiere CC or whatever, you can still use the GTX 1070's CUDA acceleration while you're editing, which is nice. Uh, we have a 80 plus gold power supply, thermal take DPSG, uh, 750 watt, again, getting the job done. It's uh, got pretty decent cables, mostly all black and everything. A couple red plugs, but we're actually going to be reusing Joe's uh, air cooler in here. This is probably the most dubious part of this uh, build, only because I've never heard of this before. Joe found this and installed it himself, because there was a closed loop cooler in this system before that started failing. So Joe did a great job with this, and I, I'm, you know, it's been working fine for now, and it's got support for the LGA 2011 and 2011-3 socket. So we're just going to keep using it and, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll upgrade it in the future. 
And finally for storage, this is the Corsair Neutron XT. This is a 480 gig model. Uh, so this is going to be the operating system drive, and it's going to have plenty of storage for SSD space. Joe wanted a drive for the operating system and uh, applications. That's what this is going to be. He's also going to keep using that OCZ Vector SSD 240 in there, and that will be for uh, storing raw data. And then we're going to keep using the Revo Drive PCIe as well, and that will be a cache drive. So anyway, that's enough talking about the build. Let's build the build. Hooray! Yay. We pulled this off of Joe's old build. Now we know using too much thermal paste is is not bad, but it's not the best either. It's I like how it's hanging down. It's got the strings. <laughs> Getting the old old processor out of there. Good old 3960X. Is that perfect? Here it was lined up. Yeah. Right? Pretty good to me. I didn't even have time to say something scary. <laughs> and what goes next? This? Yeah. Uh, there's an inside one and an outside one. And I didn't want you to lift them up, so... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Cringe factor, I could just read the comments already. Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> it's alright, Joe. I don't know how to do this editing. Um, alright, so do this one first. No, 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 not that one. This one first. The one, the one that put the, that clamps that side down. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. doing. Yeah. See? So I was right. I was just trying to confuse you. Alright. Doesn't this pop off? It should. You just lift it. Oh, okay. Sweet. CPU is installed. So, yeah, wait. Oh yeah, well, no, what color should be black? <laughs> so you're gonna do four slots, basically this one, that one, that one, and that one. Oh, okay. And this does not have a latch on that side, <laughs> so just do straight down. Yeah. All right, I can only laugh on myself. So that's a learning experience. Asus started that trend. All right, there's one snap. I go? Yes, that's plenty. Damn it, strings. Keeps coming out. There you go. Stop. That's beautiful by itself. That's kind of like artwork. You, you should use After Effects to make that blob come to life. No, don't do that. Alright, so that goes down on top. The right way? What's it? Oh, this one, right? Oh, you touched it. Oh, shit. Like, I want to make a nipple joke, but I don't want to. Just tweaking this. Just, just gotta give them equal time, that's the main thing. <laughs> Otherwise one gets jealous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when I got this fan, I was wanted to get the... The two, 212 for Hyper. Hyper 212? Yeah. Classic Cooler Master? Yeah, but they didn't have this. I got this guy. And I didn't know anything about this plastic thing, so... It works, but... It's got Not as cool. rubber fan mounts for the 120 millimeter fan. It does have direct contact copper heat pipes down at the bottom. So this is definitely PC Cooler, whatever company this is. Um, I don't know where they're based or anything, but it's certainly a Hyper 212, you know, equivalent or knockoff or however you want to say that. Not quite as nice, but it does have a metal mounting on the base and everything. But this fan mount system is definitely not that great no. using these rubber things. I mean, considering that Hyper 212s, they don't use anything too much more fancy. They use little, little metal wires that aren't that expensive, but gotta cut costs. <laughs> here's the trick, here's the real trick to case opening, is these finger flaps right here, right? Because people, they're for carrying. Yeah. These will 
really mess you up trying to open the case. So you gotta reach uh, in here and pull that out like that. So do that to the other side too. Now just lift that off the top. Okay, set that to the side. Now you're about to get shocked. You will always get shocked right now by the case. I find the best way to do it is to just take my, my, my elbow, right? And just touch your elbow right there. Or your fan. It's black. I thought you were supposed to be white. It's alright. It's all... We don't see color here. It's all hardware. Ah, uh, that sounds awesome. Snaps in. Lock and low. Sweet. So Joe is using a sharpie to mark the IO shields because we ran into a, a little bit of a dilemma. This is a white box motherboard from Gigabyte. Came with no accessories at all, which meant no IO shield. Fortunately though, I do have the sister board to the G1 Gaming or the Game Gaming Ultra, which is right over here. The ultra durable. What is, I don't even know, this is the X99 Designair, of course, of course it is. Um, which has a nearly identical rear I.O. panel, and I am not using the I.O. shield right now. There's just a single USB port that is blocked, it's that red one right there. Uh, the display port in is now going to be the USB Type-C. Still have access to that, so cut that out and everything will be fine. Oh, good. When it snaps, that's a good sound. A little bit at a time. So this is how you build a computer, right? Yeah, this is a pretty standard procedure or step right. in the computer building process. Right, okay. The hack hacksaw blade to modify the IO shield doesn't sound horrible at all. Hey, it's coming though. There you go. Isn't there like a you can't oh, even see. tell it's not the right I.O. shield. It's perfect. Alright, lined up. Time for screws. I don't have a real color scheme in mind. Oh, it's, it's perfect. It's red, black, and white. It looks beautiful. And yellow accent. Oh, look at that back plate. Though. It's beautiful. To my eyes. Back plate. You guys missed sort of a brief interlude. We went and had dinner. Um, we had to take a break because we came across a dilemma, which was that we had no video out when we got the system all up and running. I think what it actually was was a BIOS issue on this motherboard. Uh, I ended up doing the Gigabyte Q Flash Plus, I believe is what it's called to update the BIOS via just a USB drive plugged into the back of the system. This is very similar to the ASUS uh, USB BIOS flashback feature. That was able to update the BIOS to the latest version. Uh, we were still not getting any video out of the graphics card in this slot. I actually moved it to the fourth slot or the third, yeah, fourth slot down here. And then I was able to get video out and then we saw that it was trying to do a BIOS rebuild, which we might have 
I, I'll, I'll take responsibility. I re might have restarted in the middle of a couple times. Anyway, after moving it there, we were able to get a video signal, the BIOS updated, and then we switched the graphics card back to the slot, and now it works. So we're good. Windows is installed, and Joe is very excited because he was starting to get sad that he wasn't going to be able to take his computer home today. I didn't want to go home lonely. So. I know, that would be so sad. So, anyway, guys, Windows is installed. We were going to do some like fancy end of the video shots of this system and everything, but honestly, it is getting late and we're both tired. So, we'll leave you with this. It looks pretty nice. It's red and black and also blue and, and also some yellow. <laughs> the color scheme in this is a little bit, it's kind of friendly, I think. It's very, it's got a party atmosphere going on inside. Oh, but we've also reconnected the extra drive. So, uh, he's booting off of that 240 gig drive. There's a 480 gig SSD. So two SSDs that are in the back on the other side. Three terabyte drive is now installed down here via the back plane. I like that. Thank you, uh, Corsair, for installing that little feature. Uh, and then also the Revo drive, although this soft or the uh, driver still needs to be installed for that. So Joe, time for you to edit this video. Oh wait, are you supposed to pull off the plastic for the, the view? Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. It's glorious. You guys are welcome. Alright guys, hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you liked and want to see more. Have a good one. We'll see you next time. Later.